video time. Hey. You let us into your computers, that's your fault. That was we'll, stupid. Yeah, but we'll give you some fun to make up for the virus you're about to encounter. Southern California Comics presents a weekly video review about books. Comic books. The movie. <gasps> the video. I'm going to be played by a cartoon uh, squirrel. I'm going to be Jesse Eisenberg. Ha ha. <laughs> nerd jokes. That'll be not relevant in like an hour. All right, so comic books this week. For the record, we're fans of that decision. Yeah, I'll say yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to go first or should I? Yeah, okay. <laughs> wow, bam, it's Miracle Man. <laughs> Like those sound effects, everyone? Um, pow, comics aren't for kids anymore. And this was the originator of that, kind of. That is the correct sound up for this. Miracle Man Numero Dos, the reprint by Marvel Comics. Yes. I like how tiny the parental advisory. It's so small. Yeah. It's so tiny if you can't tell. There's a, ooh, maybe don't get this to a five-year-old. Yeah. For those of you who don't remember, Miracle Man was a comic by Alan Moore and Gary Leach in the 80s. Uh, technically, that's Marvel Man, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Basically, it's it's uh, Captain Marvel, a British ripoff of Captain Marvel that Alan Moore and company rebooted into a deconstruction of the superhero genre, like Watchmen. Yeah. It's like if Watchmen and Miracle, or Watchmen and Captain Marvel had a baby. You would be all these babies. Yeah. And uh, for various legal reasons, no one could reprint it for many, many years. So it's kind of a, like a lost classic. But Marvel just went up and bought the rights. They're reprinting them, recoloring it. They Lots bought it of, from someone. Yeah. They bought it from the original creator. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. It's coming out now in single issue form. So they're reprinting everything. We'll see if they edit some of those issues. Cause yeah, there's, those... Some, there's some stuff that is decidedly not for kids. There's some pretty nuts. There's a graphic scene of childbirth. Yeah. Lots of ultraviolence. It should just say Max on each cover. Yeah. Um, and then and they said around 2015 they'll be getting new stories. Yeah, because there's some unpublished stuff by Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Like, he wrote a bunch of scripts, and some of it's been drawn to, mm -hmm. and they just were never able to put it out. Now they will. So, yes. if you want to hear what the hubbub is about... Yeah. We don't have issue one, sorry. Yeah. But we'll get we more, have issue though. two. We'll get more. We'll get more. Um, the opposite of that, which is for kids, the Adventure <laughs> Time 2014 Winter Special. This is definitely not Miracle Man. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bunch of short stories by uh, awesome indie cartoonists. Like, nothing drawn, nothing really drawn in the, like, the strict Adventure Time style mm -hmm. as the uh, the main series. Kind of a loose yeah, it's artist like, interpretation. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. There's lots fun. of really fun stories. There's three of them. I believe there's three. I, I read this pretty quickly. There are four stories. You yeah. get four stories, that's a dollar a story. No? That's pretty good. $1.25 a story. Okay, that's it's, okay. It's good for the kids. It's good for people who love Adventure Time. Cause, fun books. Yeah. Like, it's as good as a show. Yeah. It's weird. It's fun. It's great. This is kind of weird and fun, too. It's Guardians of the Galaxy. Hold on. Space uh, comic that's going to be a movie. Yeah. No, you're right. This is like the point now issue. This is 11 point now. And yeah. Trial of Jean Grey number one, which yeah. is the start of a new story arc. Yeah, it's part of the Guardians of the Galaxy series. The beginning yeah. of a new story arc. So if you want to continue reading Guardians of the Galaxy, you've got to read this. I picked it up because I've read like three issues, not in order. So I thought, hey, this number one seems like I can start here. And it's true. I could start there. Um, there you have it. Mm -hmm. Figure out the guys. Figure out what's going on. The talking raccoon makes sense. And I like it. The art is by Sarah Pacelli. He used to do uh, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. Super good art. Yeah. Like, she's great. Yeah, it was really good. Um, also, it has a crossover with all new X-Men because G. Gray's in there. Ah. So if you want to see what that's all about, check it out. And then you can read the arc from the beginning. Word up. Um, Cat. Saga number 18 is out. Cat 12 point meow. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is basically the end of a story arc. It kind of ties up a lot of what's been going on since issue one. So mm -hmm. this is like a major issue. Ooh. Yeah, this is like the last issue they're going to do for a little bit. They're, okay. they're taking another break, as they are want to do. Mm, so, that's yeah. good. Check it out. This is a, such a great series. Full of good jokes. Cats. It's like Star Wars if... I don't know. Star Wars if, you know, you have an iPad. Yeah. St Star Wars if there it was, it had more of an eye for, like, the pop culture in the world of Star Wars. Yeah. Like, if you saw Darth Vader eating cereal. Yeah. What kind of cereal is it? It's like, uh, Force Flakes or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's stuff like that. 
Like it's it's a really it's a world that's kind of Star Warsy, but also resembles our world. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of fun. It takes more like the common common world. Yeah, it like, explores that. One of the one of the principal characters so far has been like a, a trash novelist, like 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 trashy novels. Yeah, like like the person oh, who writes yeah, that's Twilight. Right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's cool. Like this is this is a sci-fi comic where the star cross lovers join up because they. They agree that they love basically Twilight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Right. this is a great series. Check it's it so out. So much fun. Um, number two, Earth Two. <laughs> I can't. You sound so subdued. Uh, I'm sleepy. Me too. So this is an annual. I guess annuals are back now. They're starting to do them again. Oh yeah, DC does annuals. Yeah, they're back. Welcome back, annuals. Um, Earth 2 is one of the DC books I kind of enjoy a little bit. I don't really read it, but I appreciate it for what it is. Even though it's not what it used to be, but whatever, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, so this is basically Justice Society. Second Earth, the main heroes are dead, and then it's, you know, it's Jay Garrick. It's Robot Red Tornado, who is Lois Lane, I just read? Yeah. Um, Hawkman, Hawkgirl, who are non-existent. Um, this is all those characters reimagined into blah, blah, blah. This uh, talks about the Batman they have, and it's not who you think it is. I was going to say who it was, and I thought, that, don't do that. That's it's, mean. It's not the man from the movies, Christian Bale. That's is, This is not Christian Bale. This is not your grandpa's Christian Bale. Yes. Uh, so the whole annual is about his origin and why. Cool. Um, I liked it because I thought I knew what it was, and I read this, and I was like, oh, I don't know what it is. And I was like, oh, no, I know exactly what it is. I was right. But it still did that to me, so that's good. Um, yeah, so I check it out. It's a good if you just want to pick up a book casually and read it. Yeah. If you want to experience DC Comics characters but not take part in the New Fifty Two, yeah. here's an alternate universe where stuff is different. Yeah, and it's better. It's better than the main universe. Oops. <laughs> um, you know, this is like I ca I'm kind of wasting my my third spot because okay. you know obviously it's based on a very popular film. Sure. But one of my favorite books this week was a. Uh, Uncanny Avengers. This is number 16. I never pay attention to numbers, so I should have to check. <laughs> Let's read the next one. Yeah. Um, Rick Remender, Steve McNiven, you know, who did uh, who did uh, Civil War back in the day? Back in the day. It's like almost 10 years ago. Almost a decade ago. That makes... Want to feel old? I was younger. Yeah. Um, this is, like, decidedly a Rick Remender comic. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the guy who writes Fear Agent. Like, mm -hmm. this feels like it's by the guy who writes Fear Agent. There's stakes... A bunch of people have been killed off thus far. And what's really great about this Avengers book versus, like, any of the other Avengers books coming out is that it takes place in its own little, like, own little universe, pretty mm -hmm. much. Like, yeah. there's not much crossover. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to read 50 other books to get this. Just, Thank like, it's, he's been telling his own epic, like, mm -hmm. kind of like a Uncanny X-Force. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nice. I yeah. like that. Even, like, the uh, Age of Ultron tie-in mm -hmm. was not affiliated with Age of Ultron. He just used the That's time cool. travel thing to like tell his own story. I like that. Good. Robin's his book. It's really good. You should read it if you haven't already. Just want to read some like high stakes superhero nonsense. What if I am reading it though? What do I do then? Um, read it again. If you've been reading it monthly. Read them all in one go, and your mind will be blown. Okay. Or go watch the Avengers. They made a movie about them, you know. They made a movie about the movie The Avengers? Yeah, yeah, like, Sean Connery is played by Chris Evans. <gasps> oh! It's weird. Uma Thurman's played by eight other people? Uma Thurman is played by Scarlett Johansson. Oh, I thought... With where the... I thought Robert here. Denny Jr. played her. I didn't really watch the movie. It's uh, good, though. Second segment? Yeah! And away we go. Only this far, because there's boxes out. These were supposed to pull. What is happening here? I don't know. All right. Uh, we thought we would discuss some old event books. Yeah. Because I just said, like, here's a comic you can read without knowing any continuity, and it just happens. Mm -hmm. And you never have to venture outside of it. We're going to give you the reverse of that, <laughs> I think. Well, it's like a good... We're, we're talking a about crossovers, but... Yeah. Crossovers where, like, the main story is all pretty much all you need. Yeah. Well, not this one. This one's... Yeah, yeah, you're right. This is an example. Okay, whatever. I'll shut up. You go first. Yeah. Since this one is an older comic. Uh, Invasion. Late 80s DC Comics. 
uh, these aliens called the Dominion decide like, hey, Earth has a lot of superheroes on it. Let's go invade them with every alien in the universe. That sounds pretty sweet. And they do that. And of course, the uh, it's it's pitched as like, hey, we need to stop these guys before they take over us. But obviously, the, the Dominion have an ulterior motive. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, yeah. And this is a... It's a three-issue series. Each issue is 80 pages, no ads. That's sweet. Um, you pretty much get all you need from the from the main series, and the tie-ins kind of like just flesh them out a little bit. Like, you see, you see, uh, Animal Man fights some Thanagarians, and then you get like a panel of that. But in the actual comic, in the actual Animal Man issue, you see him fight them. It's not that important, but uh, it's great. It's by uh, Keith Giffen and Bill Mantlo. Art art from a young Todd McFarlane. Whoa. Super good. That's cool. And there's like all sorts of weird continuity stuff like, hey, remember when Snapper Car got superpowers? It happened here. That's remember weird. the Omega Men? Uh, Half maybe. of them kill get killed off in this comic. Yeah. Yeah. Two thumbs up. It's super good. Um Yeah, just let's see. Two hundred and forty pages of comics. We actually have it here for three dollars. That's a good price. It's super entertaining. You should buy even though you have one. Yeah, and like like, Bill Mantlo wrote the script off of Keith Giffen's, like, story, mm -hmm. like, his plotting. And, like, it's so funny. Like, there's some good one-liners, some That's good cool. back-and-forth, good narration. I like humor. Yeah. All in one story. It's great. Mine is also a DC. I'm going to show on the side because it's so impressive. Uh, I'm going to talk about DC. One million. Remember this? Remember these weird covers? Uh, back in the 19-whatevers. Uh, uh, it's like... 98 maybe 96 yeah. 97 uh grant morrison wrote it yeah it was a two issue four issue four issue <laughs> oh i'm thinking of never mind <laughs> the kingdom for no something else okay weird um they did it a four issue thing called dc 1 million about the future yeah dc in the future the the justice league of the year one million or something mm -hmm. come back to invite the justice league of the present to take place in this like olympic event Mm -hmm. To celebrate Superman coming, like the original Superman coming out of the sun. Yeah. Yeah. That's In right. the year one million. I forgot about that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So what what happens? Well, there were just four issues. Yeah. I won't tell you what happens. But the tie-ins were sweet because each issue for the month was retitled as issue number one million. Yeah. Which is kind of awesome. And you, yeah, it was cool. You either got to see what happened in the year one million with that character, mm -hmm. or like the character in our time, like Batman was in our time with our Robin. Yeah. But then, I think Flash... Flash, like, took place took part in, like, this Olympic race. Yeah. I think with the other Flash, with yeah. the One Million Flash, in Flash the One the Million Dorito's Century. all over him. Yeah. Um, so you Super can just cool. read the four issue. The cool thing about both of these is you can just read the main thing and be done. Yeah. But for one of the few times, the tie-ins had a purpose. Yeah. You know, it was, it was let's see the Flash in the One Million. I'd read that. That's important yeah. to yeah. me. Yeah, instead of forcing, like... Aquaman to take part in some stupid crossover that isn't quite relevant to him. Yeah. It's just like, have fun, do whatever yeah. you want. Like the Young Justice one I had as a kid. Yeah, that was fun. It's just one. like here's this weird reimagination of like, like a Robin, Superboy, and uh, Impulse as like something completely different. Yeah, I think Robin. I think in the Batman book, uh, Robin is now a toy. Yeah, the toy wonder. Because they're worried about Robins being murdered all the time. So he goes, so you know what? Make a robot so we don't have that problem anymore. Yeah. So again, you could skip some and go, don't need to worry about it. It's not a tie-in or go, I like that idea. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try this. Or yeah. I'm going to see my hero doing his thing. It inspired more creativity. So it's just yeah. like, you're one million. Do whatever you want with them. Yeah, it's the it future. doesn't matter. So I'm holding a Booster Gold one million that was a tie-in from a few years ago. Yeah. In reference to that because he never had his own issue of one million. Yeah. Sweet. It's <laughs> so good. So. And, and the main series is one of my favorites. Yeah. It's by Grant Morrison, like Valsa Mikes or one of those guys. Mm -hmm. It's a good, it's a good superhero story. It's good. Yeah, it's a solid one. So that's it. We didn't talk about any sexy witch books like Danny wanted me to. Totally want to talk about Tara. Yeah, well, maybe next week. <laughs> if we can think of a tie-in, we'll do it. He'll do it. What if Jesse Eisenberg played Tara? Maybe they should base it on this issue. I was thinking of Witchblade. Hey, we'll do that. Tara Witchblade next week. Boom. Preview. All right. See you next week. I'm gonna get ready later by not thinking about those two things until we do the video. Okay. This looks cool, though.